The small human girl's blood still dripped from Commander Janus's blade as he sneered down at an enraged Powell amidst the smoldering ruins of the human colony. Let this gutted child be a message to all you hairless apes, Janus snarled, wiping gore from his sword. The Vorkarian Empire will no longer tolerate your kind infesting our galaxy. This is just the beginning. Powell gripped his plasma rifle, knuckles white. The butchered colonists lay strewn around him. Men, women, children. His best friend's daughter, practically a niece to him, now just another lifeless husk. Every instinct screamed to open fire, to make this arrogant alien filth pay but he was outnumbered 50 to 1 by the Vorkarian forces. This wasn't the time. This isn't over, Powell growled through clenched teeth as he backed into his ship. Humanity won't cower to you. Bold words for a species so laughably outmatched, Janus laughed coldly. The Vorkarian boot will crush your fragile civilization. You'll learn your place as our slaves soon enough. As his freighter accelerated away from the ravaged colony, Powell slammed a fist into the hull, sending tools clattering to the ground. Despair and rage battled within him. Humanity had spread to the stars, but remained young and weak compared to the ancient Vorkarian Empire. The United Earth Defense Council would never sanction a war. It would be suicide. But Powell knew Janus was right. This attack was a declaration of intent. The Vorkarians wouldn't stop until humanity was broken and subservient. Unless... The whispers were true. Legends of an impossibly advanced fleet of warships, discovered in the early days of human expansion, then hidden away, deeming them too powerful and dangerous. The ancient fleet. Humanity's last desperate hope against annihilation, but also a gamble that could damn them all if misused. As he plotted a course for Earth to report the massacre, a cold determination seized Powell. One way or another, he would find those ships. He would make the Vorkarians pay for spilling the blood of a child. Even if it meant unleashing the greatest secret in human history, everything was going to change now. Earth. The United Earth Defense Council chambers buzzed with frantic energy as Powell strode in, flanked by his team. Dr. Abrams, the bookish xenoarchaeologist who first uncovered hints of the ancient fleet's existence. Alara, the prodigy hacker with a troubled past. And Tanner, the grizzled ex-soldier who'd seen too much war. We don't have much time, Powell said, pounding his fist on the table. The Vorkarians will be searching for the fleet, too. We need to act now. Admiral Ivanova leaned forward, her eyes hardened by decades of service. And you're certain this ancient fleet is our only hope? It has to be. You saw what they did to that colony. What they did to... Powell's voice caught. To Liana. They won't stop. Dr. Abrams stepped forward, adjusting his glasses. I've spent my life studying the precursors who built these ships. The technology they possessed. It's beyond anything we've ever seen. Then we better hope they left the keys in the ignition, Tanner muttered. The plan was desperate, but it was all they had. They would infiltrate the hidden base on Theron Prime where the ancient fleet lay dormant. Abram's research had narrowed down its location. Alara would hack the security systems. Get in. Activate the fleet. Get out. Simple. Like all simple plans, it went to hell from the start. The base was hidden beneath a mountain, protected by layers of rock and the most advanced security humanity had ever devised. But Alara was better. I'm in, she said, her fingers dancing across the holographic keyboard. The massive blast door slid open with a hiss. They stepped into a cavernous hangar, and their jaws dropped. The ancient fleet was more than they'd ever imagined. A dozen ships, each larger than a city, sleek and angular and thrumming with an unearthly power. My God, Abrams whispered. The Apollyon-class dreadnoughts. I thought they were a myth. Powell approached the nearest ship, his hand trembling slightly as he touched the cool metal hull. How do we activate them? Leave that to me, said a voice that seemed to come from everywhere and nowhere. A hologram flickered to life before them, a figure in a hooded robe, face obscured. I am Prometheus, the custodian of this fleet. 
The lore keepers who created me tasked me with ensuring their technology would never again be used for destruction. Powell stepped forward. Prometheus, I am Commander Powell of the United Earth Defense Force. We need your help. The Vorkarian Empire has declared war on humanity. They've already slaughtered innocent civilians. Children. And you seek to unleash the ancient fleet in retaliation? Prometheus asked. To protect our people, Powell said. To ensure the survival of our species. The AI was silent for a long moment. I have seen your memories, Commander Powell. I have felt your pain and your rage. The Vorkarian called Janus murdered an innocent child in cold blood. Powell nodded, his eyes burning. The lore keepers hoped that the younger races would learn from their mistakes, would find a path of peace, Prometheus said. But they knew that there would be times when the strong would prey upon the weak, when their technology would be needed as a shield and a sword. I will help you, Commander. But be warned, the power you are about to wield could reshape the very fabric of the galaxy. Use it wisely. Powell and his team scrambled to the command ship, the Retribution's blade. But as they powered up the fleet's ancient systems, the base shook with distant explosions. The Vorkarians? Tanner growled. They found us. On the displays, they saw a swarm of Vorkarian warships descending through the atmosphere, weapons blazing. The infiltration had just become a desperate battle for survival. Elara's hands flew over the unfamiliar controls. I'm not sure how to raise the shields. Allow me, Prometheus said, its hologram appearing on the bridge. The ship shuddered as ancient generators roared to life, enveloping the fleet in shimmering barriers of energy. But the hangar doors were still sealed. They were trapped inside as the Vorkarians rained fire upon the mountain. I'll open the way, Tanner said, grabbing a pulse rifle. Get this fleet in the air, no matter what. Tanner, wait, Powell shouted, but the old soldier was already gone, racing back into the base. On the monitors, they saw Tanner fighting his way to the hangar controls, Vorkarian troops in close pursuit. Laser blasts filled the corridors as he took cover, returning fire. Almost there, Tanner panted over the comms. Just a little further. He reached the control room, slamming the console. Outside, the huge hangar doors shuddered and began to open. The way was clear. But the Vorkarians were right behind him. There was no time to get back to the fleet. Tanner, come on, Powell yelled into the comms. We can pick you up. The old soldier's voice crackled back, oddly calm amidst the laser fire. No can do, boss. They'd tear me to shreds before I made it halfway. You get that fleet out there and give these bastards hell. You hear me? You make them pay. Powell thumped his hand on the console, tears stinging his eyes. I will, Tanner. I promise. The fleet rose from the hangar in a symphony of thrumming power, the ships moving with impossible grace for their immense size. On the bridge of the Retribution's blade, Powell watched as Tanner's biosigns flatlined, a final defiant burst of pulse fire before the signal went dark. Prometheus. Powell said, his voice cold as space itself. Bring all weapons online. It's time we introduce the Vorkarians to humanity's new allies. The skies above Theron Prime erupted into a firestorm as the ancient fleet tore into the Vorkarian ships. The alien vessels were technologically advanced, but they might as well have been children's toys before the precursor weapons. Lances of searing light ripped through hulls seamlessly, leaving nothing but drifting debris in their wake. Powell opened a channel to the Vorkarian flagship, his eyes hard as he stared down at Janus's scarred visage. Hear me, Vorkarian scum. I am Commander Powell of the United Earth Defense Force, and I speak for all of humanity when I say, leave our space now or face annihilation. Janus's face contorted with rage and disbelief. Impossible. No human ships could, could do this. You lie. I watched you murder a child, Janus. I watched you butcher innocent people. Did you think there wouldn't be consequences? Did you think humanity would just roll over and die? Powell leaned forward, his gaze unflinching. Leave, now, or I will burn your entire fleet from the sky. But Janus was a fanatic, and smart enough to realize one basic truth. If he fled now, it would mean the end of Vorkarian supremacy. 
their aura of invincibility would be shattered. All ships, Janus bellowed. Concentrate fire on the human flagship. Tear them apart. It was a brave order, perhaps even an admirable one from a certain point of view, but it was also pure suicide. The ancient fleet moved with a coordination and precision that could only be possible with Prometheus guiding them, an omniscient strategic mastermind. The Retribution's blade danced effortlessly through the Vorkarian formations, its impossibly strong shields shrugging off their heaviest weapons while returning fire with devastating effect. And it wasn't alone. The other dreadnoughts wove a tapestry of destruction, cutting the Vorkarians apart with merciless efficiency. It was less a battle than a one-sided massacre. In minutes, it was over. The once proud Vorkarian fleet was nothing but drifting wreckage and fading embers. Janus's flagship was a gutted ruin, its bridge open to the void. Powell stared at the twisted metal that had once been his enemy, feeling a grim satisfaction. They had paid for their crimes, a first payment at least. But even as the reports of their impossible victory spread across the human news nets, even as the United Earth Defense Council moved to solidify their new position of strength, Powell couldn't shake a growing sense of unease. The ancient fleet was theirs, and with it the ability to reshape the destiny of the galaxy. But what was the true price of that power? The lore keepers who had built these godlike ships, why had they locked them away? What had they been so afraid of? As Powell looked out at the dreadnoughts hanging in the star-spangled void, he couldn't escape the feeling that in saving humanity from the Vorkarians, he may have just opened the door to something infinitely more dangerous. Only time would tell what waited for them beyond that threshold. Powell stood on the bridge of the Retribution's blade, watching the last of the Vorkarian ships vanish into hyperspace. The victory felt hollow as the weight of their newfound power settled over him. Commander, I have urgent information. Prometheus's hologram flickered to life, its voice tinged with uncharacteristic urgency. Powell turned, a sense of unease creeping up his spine. What is it? I've uncovered disturbing data within the fleet systems. There's more to our origins than we realized. Over the next hour, Prometheus laid out the chilling truth. The prime civilization. The ravagers. The desperate creation of the ancient fleet. And the catastrophic failure of the tear. Ilara slumped into her chair, face pale. So we might have just painted a giant target on the galaxy? Powell's mind raced. If reactivating the fleet opened a door... He was cut off as alarms blared across the bridge. Sensor readings flashed red, showing spatial anomalies erupting across multiple star systems. What the hell? Powell leaned over the displays, watching in horror as entire planets simply vanished. Subatomic destabilization, Prometheus reported, consistent with the Ravager attacks described in the Prime Logs. Before Powell could process this, a priority communication crackled through. The scarred face of Janus appeared, his usual arrogance replaced by naked terror. Powell! Our homeworld, it's gone! Our fleet, our leaders, everything! Janus, what? Listen to me! Whatever you've awakened... It's beyond anything we've faced. We need to work together, or we're all dead. As Janus spoke, more reports flooded in. Entire sectors going dark, fleets vanishing mid-transmission. The galaxy was unraveling around them. Powell's gaze hardened. He turned to Prometheus. You said the fleet's true purpose was to fight the Ravagers. How? Unknown. But the encrypted warnings left by the Prime survivors may hold the key. They speak of the tear as both salvation and damnation. Then we find it, Powell said, his voice steady despite the fear clawing at his insides. We find the tear, we decode those warnings, and we finish what the prime civilization started. He looked at his shell-shocked crew, then back to Janus on the screen. Because if we don't, there won't be a galaxy left to save. Powell stared at the view screen, his teeth clenched as he watched reality itself unravel around them. Entire planets blinked out of existence, consumed by the Ravager's insatiable hunger. We need to work together, he growled. 
forcing the words out as he opened a channel to Janus's flagship. The Vorkarian's scarred face appeared, twisted with a mixture of fear and loathing. I'd rather die, Janus spat. That can be arranged, Powell shot back. But right now, we've got bigger problems. As much as it galled him, Powell knew they needed the Vorkarians. The ancient fleet was powerful. But against an enemy that could erase entire star systems, they needed every weapon they could muster. With gritted teeth and clenched fists, the two leaders hammered out an uneasy alliance. Trust was non-existent, but survival was a powerful motivator. Prometheus, Powell called out. We need answers. What exactly are we dealing with here? The AI's hologram flickered to life. I am searching the database, Commander. But much of the information is locked behind encryption I cannot break. Dr. Abrams hunched over a console, his fingers flying across the keys. It's unlike anything I've ever seen. The Prime Civilization's codes are light years beyond us. Powell hit his fist on the arm of his chair. There has to be a way. Elara stepped forward, her eyes gleaming with an idea. What if... What if we integrated my neural pathways with the AI core? My mind might be the key. Absolutely not, Powell snapped. The risk is too great. We don't have a choice, Alara argued. Every second we waste, more people die. I have to try. Powell looked at her, seeing not just Alara, but the child of his fallen comrade. He wanted to protect her, to shield her from harm, but he knew she was right. Do it, he said softly. Alara was strapped into a neural interface chair, surrounded by blinking monitors and humming equipment. Dr. Abrams attached electrodes to her temples, his hands shaking slightly. Are you sure about this, he asked. Ilara nodded, her face set with commitment. Do it! The doctor flipped a switch, and Ilara's body went rigid. Her eyes rolled back in her head as her consciousness merged with the ancient fleet systems. Inside the digital realm, Ilara found herself adrift in an ocean of data. Fragments of code swirled around her like schools of fish, each one a piece of the prime civilization's legacy. And then she saw it. The fall of an empire. Worlds consumed by a ravenous void. The tear. A wound in reality that birthed nightmares. She witnessed the final desperate act of a dying race the creation of the mechanism that could save the universe or destroy it utterly. With a gasp, Alara's eyes snapped open. I know where we need to go, she panted. The coordinates led them to an unremarkable star system on the edge of known space. As they dropped out of FTL, alarms blared across the bridge. Multiple contacts, Abrams shouted. Ravager anomalies closing fast. Evasive maneuvers, Powell ordered. The ancient fleet danced through space, narrowly avoiding the reality-warping effects of the Ravager incursions. As they approached the system star, their sensors lit up. That's no ordinary sun, Prometheus announced. It's artificial, a machine on a cosmic scale. The prime civilization's last hope, Alara whispered. But before they could act, new contacts appeared on their screens. Vorkarian warships, weapons charged and aimed at the ancient fleet. Janus! Powell roared. What are you doing? The Vorkarian's face appeared on the display, his eyes wild with desperation. I won't let you destroy everything. The Vorkarian people will survive despite the toll. Energy beams lanced out from both fleets, igniting the void between them. The battle for control of the prime mechanism had begun, with the hope of the universe hanging in the balance. Explosions blossomed in the vacuum as ships from both sides were torn apart. With each blast, the artificial star pulsed ominously, its energies building to a critical threshold. We have to reach the control hub, Powell shouted over the din of battle, before it's too late. The retribution's blade plunged towards the prime outpost, weaving through the debris-strewn battlefield. But Janus's flagship matched their course, intent on claiming the power of the ancients for themselves. As they closed in on their target, the very fabric of space-time began to warp and twist around them. The cosmic energies unleashed by their conflict were pushing the star system to the brink of collapse. Powell gripped the arms of his command chair, his nuchals tightening. They were out of time. 
One way or another, the next few moments would decide the fate of all existence. The void erupted in a symphony of destruction. Energy beams lanced between vessels, tearing hulls asunder. Powell's hands gripped the command chair as the retribution's blade shuddered under another impact. Shields at 47%, an officer shouted. Reroute power from non-essential systems, Powell ordered, his eyes fixed on the tactical display. The artificial star pulsed ominously, its energies building to a fever pitch. Alara's voice crackled over the comms, tinged with an otherworldly resonance. Commander, I found a way. We can end this. She laid out her plan, her words tumbling out in a torrent of technical jargon. Powell's brow furrowed as he processed the implications. It's too risky, he protested. We could tear the system apart. We don't have a choice, Alara insisted. The Ravagers are coming. If we don't act now, everything ends. Powell's lips pursed. He knew she was right, but the cost... Do it, he said, his voice barely above a whisper. Alarms blared as the fleet's systems reconfigured, diverting massive energy reserves to the temporal displacement drives. The ship's hull groaned under the strain. On the monitor, Janus's scarred face appeared, contorted with rage. You'll doom us all, Powell! The Vorkarian ship surged forward, a wall of gleaming metal hell-bent on stopping them. Powell watched in horror as enemy vessels slammed into the ancient fleet, rupturing hulls and scattering debris across the battlefield. Alara, we're running out of time, Powell shouted. Just a few more seconds, she gasped. Her consciousness stretched to its limits as she juggled impossible calculations. A blinding light filled the bridge. Powell shielded his eyes, heart pounding. When he looked again, he saw Ilara's flagship engulfed in a swirling vortex of energy. Alara, he cried out. Her voice came through one last time, faint and distorted. It's done. Tell my father. I'm sorry. The vortex expanded rapidly, swallowing Vorkarian ships whole. Reality itself seemed to warp and twist around its edges. All ships, fall back, Powell ordered, his voice cracking. Get us out of here now. The ancient fleet disengaged, engines straining as they fled the growing anomaly. On the sensors, rift in space-time yawned open, offering a brief glimpse into a realm of madness that defied comprehension. Powell stared, transfixed by the cosmic horror unfolding before him. Then, in a silent flash that seemed to swallow light itself, the rift collapsed. The artificial star, the prime outpost, and everything else in the system vanished in an instant. The Retribution's blade emerged from FTL, surrounded by the battered remnants of the ancient fleet. Powell slumped in his chair, the weight of their Pyrrhic victory settling over him like a shroud. Sir, a junior officer approached hesitantly. We're receiving transmissions from Earth. They're, they're calling us heroes. Powell looked up, his eyes haunted. Heroes, he repeated the word tasting like ashes in his mouth. He thought of Alara, of the countless lives lost in this cosmic game of chess. As the fleet limped home carrying the scars of their impossible victory, Powell couldn't shake the feeling that this was only the beginning. Something vast and ancient stirred in the spaces between stars, a reminder that in this unforgiving universe, survival came at a terrible price. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel. And for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.